In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the end of day historical data API to extract the time that a stock trades at its daily high and low. Now, end of day data is one of a number of APIs for financial data that operates on a freemium model, and they allow you to make 20 free API calls a day. We're going to be just looking at one of their endpoints here, but the nice thing is that they have access to data from over 70 exchanges around the world. And uh, I'm going to leave a link to their site in the description for this video as well as a link here that gives you access to special pricing if you find you need more than what you get with the the freemium model. All right, the other thing here is a link to the helper library that gives us access to a bunch of convenience functions that make working with some of the endpoints easier. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is set up our environment and it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm just going to be using the uh, date time module to manipulate the dates a little bit. Uh, we're going to be using that helper library end of day historical data and then pandas to put stuff in a data frame and then sort of do the, the filtering that we want to do. Okay, so next up I am going to need my API key and uh, I've stored mine in a file. Uh, you can probably just store it right in your notebook or if you want to do something similar to kind of keep it more private, you can do what I'm doing here. Okay, and that is stored in a text file and then just read it in and store it in a string as needed. Okay, so next up I'm going to go ahead and get our start day and uh, I'm just going to go back about 10 days or so. The limit is 120 days for minute by minute data and uh, 600 days for five minute interval data. And the data is indexed to the Unix timestamp, uh, which just sort of records as an integer the number of seconds that is allowed since January 1st, 1970. And uh, I don't think in that way. The first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, take whatever day I want to start with and convert that into a Unix timestamp. Okay, so then, you know, November 8, 2021 as a Unix timestamp, and it looks like that. Okay, so with that done, uh, we have everything we need to sort of make our API call. And so then I will just create a instance of the end of day historical data object. Okay, using my API key, and then we'll go and get our data. Okay, so just so you can see, I, uh, I hit tab there just so we can kind of take a quick look through all the calls you can make. All right, and uh, I, I'm just going to get these prices intraday here, but you can see that, okay, the helper library has a access to lots of other endpoints, and uh, I'll leave it to you to kind of explore those on your own. All right, so I'm going to get prices intraday, and then I'm going to just use Tesla here, and uh, we're going to go with one minute data and we're going to start from that start stamp that we got just above. Okay, so that's the whole call. Uh, I'm going to actually wrap this whole thing in a constructor for the pandas data frame so then the data is just easier to, to visualize. Okay, and then we'll just take a look at the first few rows there. And uh, okay, so we can see what you get back. All right, so there's that timestamp that we used to get the earliest data. Okay, and then you can see that it has a date and time posted here as well. Uh, this is UTC time, so we're going to need to convert that to uh, Eastern time or New York time in order to figure out uh, regular hours. Okay, and then if you don't want to install or if you want to see what's actually going on, uh, instead of using that convenience function, and get intraday. Uh, here is the same code, all right, and it just makes use of the actual endpoint that we called in that in that function above. Uh, and then you you would need to use the request library to go and get the JSON uh, for this data. Okay, so I'm not going to run that. I'm just putting it here for reference in case you want to start looking at uh, other ways to access the data. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here and uh, I'm going to set a, a different index. All right, so it's just a, an integer based index when you get the data and I'm going to replace it with that uh, date and time so I can go ahead and filter it by, you know, just the regular market hours. Okay, so I'm going to look at that date time column and I'm going to make sure that it is a 
actual date time. Okay, next I'm going to replace the index with this data. Okay, and then I'm going to add a couple of columns. I actually want the time and the date to live separately in columns. Okay, so pandas makes it pretty convenient to do something like that. And then once I add my columns, I'm going to uh, get rid of a few columns. So I don't actually need the, the columns GMT offset, uh, the timestamp, or the original date time. Okay, let's take a look at the result. All right, so there is our revised data frame. All right, and then next we're going to just convert it and uh, look at regular trading hours. All right, and I'm actually going to make a new variable here so I can leave this data in its original form. Okay, so we'll just make that a copy of the original data. And since the index is a date time, I can use this between time method and go ahead and just get the times that we're interested in. Okay, so we're actually in um, GMT minus five. Okay, so when this time says it's nine o'clock, uh, here it's, it's really uh, four. This is before in the morning. All right, so we're going to need to adjust out the, all the times that our market is closed. All right, so I'm gonna go forward five hours and that should be nine to five. And I'm gonna leave the original data in its form. So I'm gonna copy all this, okay? And then we'll take a look at that. All right, so that's really 9.30 in New York City. And, and then you can see that we cut out roughly uh, 3,000 rows of data there. So just the minutes where uh, it's trading in the off market is a lot less dense than when the, when the, uh, the market is open. And since we're looking for things like highs and lows, I don't want the data to be sort of skewed by sort of aberrant trades outside of regular market hours. All right. But you do have access to all the data if you need it. So I, I don't really want to be looking at, you know, two thirty to nine at night. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that time. I'm going to roll it back to Eastern time here. Here. And uh, essentially what I'm going to do is just subtract five hours from each one of these times. Okay, so essentially I'm just going to take that date, tell it what format to expect, and subtract 300 minutes from it. And uh, let, let's see what we get when we do this. All right, we actually get something kind of weird. It was a time, and then by doing this math, Pandas has kind of implied some kind of date, which is, you know, January 1st, 1900. And uh, obviously, I don't really want that. And so uh, I need to go ahead and convert this to just the time. All right, so I can do that by hanging the date time pandas method off the end and then just telling it I want the time. Now, unfortunately, since I've already done the math once, if I do it again, uh, I'm going to get something really strange. So uh, I need to uh, go ahead and recall and uh, format the data first. Okay, and uh, actually this is pretty easy since I made a copy of the data. All I have to do is go and get a fresh copy here and then uh, I'll just run this cell and get just the time. All right, so there we have it. All right, so our time's in New York. All right, and now all that's sort of left to do is to go and answer that original question, when are these highs and lows occurring during the day? All right, so uh, first I'm gonna go ahead and get the high and the low in general for each day. Okay, so kind of a convenient method of making uh, your own data frame based on whatever statistics you want to pull out of there. All right, so I can use whatever functions here I want. I'm just going to get the min and the max and group it by the date. And uh, so we can see, you know, going back roughly 10 days, uh, what was the high and what was the low for each day. Okay, but what we really want to know is what time does that occur? All right, and that is also pretty easy. I'm going to just look at my data and I'm going to go find a location in that data. Okay, once again, we're going to look at the date and then for the low column, I want to find the index of the minimum. All right, so this is actually a very powerful function in pandas. And when I run that, 
we can see that okay um you know on the on the eighth the the lowest price of uh, the day was actually the, in the first minute you know it occurred almost at the end of the day the second day all right and then and then so forth maybe uh, with more data we can identify some kind of trend here all right but even with just this 10 days uh, we can see that okay usually um at least during this time period uh, tesla's lowest price was very close to the open I guess Tesla was in sort of an upward trend during this time. And then to get the max, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this code and make a couple changes here. Okay, so instead of looking at the low, we're going to look at the high. And instead of getting the index of the min, we're going to get the index of the max. So I hope that helps you get started using end of day data API.